Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you living an exciting life. If you are not living an exciting life, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Exciting? Jen, I'm hardly just trying to get to be a five. Like I am all right, what if I could just be content? Exciting? That seems really far off, doesn't it? I woke up this morning and ran a couple of errands, took Cameron to school, ran a couple of errands. And when I came home, I was really tired, like could hardly keep my eyes open. I'm getting a little bit concerned about my own health of like, what the heck is going on? Like, why am I so blasted tired? And I went and laid down. And so of course I fell back to sleep for, uh, I probably would say another couple of hours. And I roll over in bed and I stare out the window. And right now it's fall, it's October, it's um, like, early, almost mid-October. I don't even know what the date is. And um, the colors are beautiful outside. And so I open my window and I'm staring outside at the leaves. And they're just these really rich, you know, orange, yellow, these golden leaves. I just love them. The sun is kind of peeking through, you know, the clouds. It's kind of hazy, kind of, like it's that white sky. And I'm just peeking through and I'm seeing the sunlight through the, through the leaves. And it's so beautiful. But yet my mood is kind of low. And I'm like, why am I so tired? Like I I need to get up and I need to work out and I need to meditate and I need to bring up my my numbers. Like I'm feeling kind of like crap, right? And not like crap, like physically I feel fine, but I mean, just like my mood and my energy are really low. And I'm like, okay, so what can I do? That's immediately what I go to. What can I do to improve my mood? And I get up and I just start kind of responding to my environment. You know, I get up, I do the dishes, I, you know, I do my normal morning routine and brush my hair and get dressed and, you know, do all that. And, and, uh, and I'm like, God, I'm just feeling kind of poopy. Like my mood is just kind of poopy. So I sit out here on the couch and I'm looking out the front window where we have this beautiful maple tree that is shifting colors and it's littered some of its leaves on the ground and it's just so gorgeous. And I just hundred percent love it. And I'm standing here, I'm going like, what is wrong with me? That's a terrible question to ask yourself for one. But as I'm, because then you just think of all the things that are wrong with you, right? So I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, why am I not excited? Why am I not happy? Like, I don't have a full-time job. We have money. I have a beautiful relationship. I have a beautiful family. The dogs are fantastic. I have this house. I have this business that, you know, that I love. Um, And... I sit here on the couch and I'm just kind of evaluating, I'm going inward and I'm evaluating why my mood is so poopy based on my experience right now. And I thought for a second, like, well, you know, here's, because I first started with that question, you know, what's wrong with me? And I'm like, well, you know, this weather is really tough because it's kind of rainy, like it rained all night and so everything's wet and it's, you know, we're heading towards that kind of dirty, dark time of year, but I love this time of year. Like I love the smell of fall and leaves and our maple still has all these leaves on it. And like I said, the leaves are littering the ground, which is just this beautiful orange and golden color. And I'm like, what else is wrong? And so I list all these things that are wrong while I'm evaluating my energy. And I realize, I recognize that the more I list of things that are wrong, the more terrible I feel. (laughs) Like I start to feel worse. And I'm like, okay, stop, 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 stop. What is right that I love right now? Like what is going on in my life that is amazing or that is great or that is good? I mean, just pick whatever word feels good for you to say right then. Cause maybe you can't get too exciting because you feel like absolute crap. Just go up a level, go up one. You know, I feel like a one, what would be the emotional word of a two? Contentment, bored, you know, another word that is better than where you're at. So I'm like, okay, well, what's going, what is, you know, it's like what, I have nothing to be poopy about. Like my health is good. My back feels good. My, you know, my, my physical body feels good. I must just be in a weird mood. You know, it's like, well, what, what could be better? Well, I would like my business to be better. You know, I would like some more clients. I would like my my podcast to be more popular. I would like some speaking events. You know, I mean, I would like, of course, more money. Um, but I love my freedom. Like freedom to me is 100%. Like I love having my freedom. Well, right there, 
just saying that, looking outside, standing in my living room, and saying to myself, I love my freedom. And that's my time freedom. And then from there, I, my numbers jumped up probably four notches just by saying that sentence. And then from there, I'm thinking, I could do anything I wanted right now. I could go for a bike ride. I could go play basketball. I could go to the climbing gym. I could walk the dogs. I could take a nap. I could watch TV. I could play in the computer. I could record a podcast. I could play with my Harry Potter stuff. I could take some photos. I could play my guitar. I could juggle. I could go downstairs and work out. I mean, the list just went and started spiraling. On and on it went. And what else went with it? My numbers. My numbers went up. And I sat there and I'm like, okay, stop for a second because let me, let me evaluate. I go inward again and all of a sudden I'm like, I feel happy. And in this moment, just by the conversation I had in my head, <laughs> I became happy. I stood up and I'm like, I'm happy. I'm here with my two favorite dogs. I have a, a, an amazing partnership with Amy. I love our boys. The, the colors are changing. It's, it's not pouring down rain. And even if it is, I don't, I don't mind the rain. But the colors are beautiful. It's my favorite time of year. And I could do anything I wanted right now. Which is the base of my, my whole existence is freedom. Like I love freedom. And my mood went up. Now, how do we do that? How do, we, how do we correct our energy? Well, first of all, going inward is the key. That is the very first step to self-growth, to transformation, to happiness, to more money, to a better relationship, to better health. Everything, 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 everything is located deep within you. Now, I remember years ago when I would hear that statement, everything you need is inside of you. And I'm like, okay, there's no $20 bill inside of me. Like, what are you guys talking about? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. So if you're there, what I mean is the, the, everything that we're going after is happiness. Nothing changed in the 10 minutes that I was having that conversation with myself. Nothing changed outside of me. I didn't all of a sudden get 10 more clients and make 10 grand. I didn't, uh, I, I, nothing happened, nothing changed. Amy didn't just come home and say, oh my God, I'm home for the afternoon. You know, nothing happened outside of me. But I went from a one to like an eight in this 10 minute period. I went from a one to an eight by having a different conversation with myself. Because I started out going, well, what's wrong? Well, that's a terrible question. Don't ask yourself that unless you're just going to evaluate because you now want to find out what's right. And then I had a deeper conversation and I went upward. I chose those emotional words that helped me go from, I feel depressed, I'm bored, I'm angry, I'm anxious, saying those words create that emotion. Those words create that energy. Like attracts like. All words have a vibrational frequency. All thoughts have a vibrational frequency. If you're saying the word anxious over and over again and you're identifying with it, I am an anxious person. I get anxious in large crowds. I'm depressed today. If you're identifying with it, you're putting it in your body. You're taking the word out here in the universe and you're putting it in your body. Meaning you're going to feel it if you keep talking about it. Any second, you're about to feel depressed. Any second, you're going to drop your own numbers down the scale into the abyss to feel like crap. So what I chose to do differently is what's going on in my life right now that I do like. There is something. Because you might be sitting there going, there's nothing, Jen. I have nothing going on in my life right now. And I go, go deeper. Find something. Do you have a roof over your head? Do you have a phone that you're listening or a computer that you are listening to this podcast on? Then something is going right for you. Do you have a car that goes down the road? 
Do you have $10 in your bank account? Do you have beautiful trees in your front yard? Do you have a dog or a cat or a bird that loves you? Then you have something going on for you right now. Do you have clean, fresh water? Do you have indoor plumbing? Do you have food? Even if it's not the most healthy food or the healthiest of foods, but do you have food? Because you have something going on for you. Do you have a warm shower? Do you have a, do you have a, a, a bed to sleep in? Do you have a TV to binge Netflix? Then you have something going good for you. Focus there. Now, the reason we're focusing there, because you're like, okay, that's great, Jen. So here's what you did, Jen. You improved your mood from a one to an eight by having a conversation. But then nothing changed outside of you. And I said, you're right. Nothing did change. Nothing changed that affected my mood. I changed because the end result, you guys, the end result, ladies, is to be happy. We go out into the world. We bang it around out there. And we try to find those things that we want to experience that make us happy. Foods, people, locations, experiences, adventures, activities, right? So we go out there and we find those things as we are growing up in our lives, as we are getting older. We used to like Oreo cookies. I hate Oreo cookies now. I love donuts. Donuts make me happy. Being thin and fit makes me happy, so I have to find a balance between the two. <laughs> so you find those things that make you happy and you do more of them. You go back in time, you go back in your day, and you go, what feels good in my life? What feels good in my life? Look around you. Get to the very basics. Get to the very basics of you of your experience, of your surroundings, of your, your relationships. Go to the very basic and focus there. Now, when your mood improves, you will have a different perspective. So we use this vibrational scale like a vertical scale from zero to 10 as if it's going up like a ladder. Well, think about that ladder as if I'm standing on the ground, I'm a zero. I go up a one, I can see a little bit more. I go up a two, a, 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 a six, an eight, a 10. From 10, now I can see things differently. I'm giving you a perspective shift. This is when transformation happens. This is when I can solve a problem from up here because I can see things differently. So our job in life is to shift and change and adapt and, and transform. But it's also about going with the transformation. You didn't have a choice when you were one and a half going towards two and you started walking. You didn't have a choice. You just started doing it. You transformed. You went from a, a a young toddler who was crawling to a baby or a toddler who is walking. Then you went from a toddler to a young child who can run, skip, climb. Then even more, I can go faster, jump higher. Now I can drive a car. And those things just naturally developed and you didn't fight it. You just went with it. You never see uh, a 16 month old, now you don't have to correct me about the age, I don't, I don't know babies very well of like when they start walking, but you don't see a 16, a 16 month old or a 20 month old fighting against walking. They try like a thousand times, get up, fall down, get up, fall down, a thousand times before they take their first three steps. Did you know that? They try over and over and over again and never once do you see them throw a temper tantrum about not being able to walk? It is a natural progression in life. Natural progression for us is no different. The only difference is that we fight it. We get comfortable in that stage of life that we're in and we don't want to go. Because last time I did something like that, something, something happened. 
he dumped me, I lost my job, I lost my friend, my car broke down, I lost my money, I lost my house. I don't want to go through that pain again, so I'm not going to go. Now here's the problem with not going, especially when you're fighting this natural progression in life, is that we create pain in our body anyway. By not going, you are creating a different kind of pain in your body. Now you're starting to feel emotional pain. I have a, she's not really a friend, she's more of an acquaintance, but she's in a really terrible relationship. I would say at least emotionally abusive, but you know, manipulative kind of a relationship. He's cheating on her and somehow she keeps going back to him. And now I do understand, you know, I've, I've done that. Um, but she keeps going back to him and this time it'll be different because, you know, the two weeks that we had off when I left, I left the house and, and he called me and he was crying, he was upset and he's like, I want you back, blah, blah, blah. And she keeps getting back together with him and the same problem keeps arising. Now, if you remember, you've been listening, I had a very similar experience with, um, with a girl that I dated uh, back in the mid 90s. And I always say it was the longest, stupidest relationship I ever had. But um, I didn't, I, I kept going. <laughs> I kept going back and getting back into this relationship. Well, what it created in me was this different kind of emotion that I think still stays with me sometimes to this day. I am triggered by a lot of things based on what this relationship, what basically this relationship put me through because I stayed in it. This relationship should have been a four day relationship, but it ended up being four years. And it was an awful, awful experience, awful. But I learned a lot, but some of the triggers are still there. Now I've cleared a lot of it out. I've forgiven the relationship. I rewrote the story, which is a wonderful coaching um, technique is rewriting the story. So now I can like, um, I can tell the other story where I don't have to tell the painful story, though I know the truth of it. Anyway, and but what it ended up doing is creating anxiety, anger, suicidal tendencies, and depression. Because of this relationship, I didn't go. I didn't leave. I didn't enter into something a little bit more valuable as a relationship should have this beautiful harmony to it. And this one didn't, but it created because I stayed, all the signs were there. All of the signs were crystal clear. The people were telling me, my friends were telling me there were, you know, the, the cheating that was like endless. Um, all of the stories that she told about previous relationships she was in. I remember, um, I, I, I worked with her and I got to know her pretty good and I think I had something was going on with my car like it wasn't starting or running anyway she gave me a ride to work and on the way home on the way back she was dropping me off and on the way back nothing had happened between us I mean I kind of had a crush on her right nothing was going on between us whatever but the story that she was telling me on the way home on the way which she was driving me home I remember intuitively seeing a version of myself standing in front of the car. So now we're in the driveway, she's driving, I'm the passenger, we're in the driveway and we're talking and she's telling me the story. And while she's telling me the story, I, I visually see my future self standing in front of the car, waving this giant red flag. Giant red flag. And I ignored it. I got into the relationship with her. It was the longest, stupidest four years of my life. And it was hard because I didn't go, because I didn't make the transition out. I didn't listen to my intuition and I didn't listen to my intuition all the other 300 times that tried to tell me that this relationship was idiotic and you should get out of it as fast as possible. I stayed and then I stayed and I stayed and I stayed and I stayed and it created this different kind of pressure, this different kind of pain that now going from where I was to where I am now, I now have anxiety, depression, anger, and suicidal tendencies because I didn't naturally go with this new transition that is like, Jen, 
this relationship is unhealthy. This person doesn't have their shit figured out. You shouldn't be with them. You should go. You should leave. And I didn't listen. So somewhere in your life, where are you not listening? Where are you not going? Where you collectively are a two in your life. You know that you, quote, should do something different, but you just don't go. Where are you not going? Where is that happening in your life? I have another friend who's, she got divorced. She has two older kids. She got divorced. She moved out. She moved in with this guy. Uh, the guy was awful to her. And, you know, she wanted me to be her friend. She's like, Jen, just tell me what to do. And I'm like, nope, this is your journey. You have to tell you what to do. And she's like, I know that I shouldn't go, but I really want to. And I really want it to be different. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And she went and it was awful. And then they broke up and she moved back home with her ex-husband. And she's realizing that that's not the best place for her to be. It's not the healthy relationship you have transformed while you've been gone. Your self-esteem has come up a little bit. But now in moving back, your self-esteem is back where it was. That's not a confidence booster. That's a confidence stealer. That is stealing the part of her that is so beautiful, that is so strong, that is so deserving. She's not going. Where are you not going? What are the things in your life that you are not doing, that you are not naturally taking those progressive steps to go towards? You're not getting out of the relationship. You're not quitting the job. You're not moving to a smaller city. You are, what are you not doing? And I suggest, I invite you to think about it. I invite you to think about where are you, like the collective, the, I don't know if I'm using that word right, but like, what is the common number that you're at in your life right now? And most people, most clients I ask, it's under five. And I say, okay, what's it going to take for you to be a seven? And they have that answer, but they don't always want to say it to themselves. They don't always want to answer it because they're afraid of what's going to be on the other side. They're afraid that if they leave the relationship, their husband's going to, instead of miss them, which will make them feel better, they're, they're going to enter into a new relationship and he's now going to be happy. And I'm going to be single and miserable. And I go, you're miserable now. They don't want to quit the job because I'm afraid that the next job is going to be stupid. You hate the job you're in now. Oh, I just don't want to move. I love this house. We've been in this house for 33 years. I don't want to move, but it's too hectic here. I hate my neighbors. I want to move. I really want to move, but I'm not moving. I'm going to stay here. The energy that you are then creating, you are taking something and you're bringing it into your body. What emotion are you keeping? What emotion are you keeping by not doing the thing, not quitting the job, not leaving the relationship, not moving or selling the house? What, what emotion are you keeping a hold of? I'm going to keep my anger because it's comfortable. I'm going to continue to yell at my neighbors and be mad about all their dogs barking because it's comfortable for me. Remember, our mind, our body doesn't want to move out of its comfort zone because it's scary. So it holds on to those things. Even depression can become like a friend when it's not your friend. When I got up this morning and I was feeling like a one, not feeling like doing anything, I'm like, oh, I really should record. But I don't feel like recording. <laughs> I really should, though. But I had to do a little bit of inner work. How am I feeling right now? What is wrong with me? Wait, change it. What's going on? What's good in my life? And I changed my focus. I feel better. The perspective shift happened. I'm up here on the ladder and now I feel better so I can do something about my mood. Because recording my podcast puts me in a great mood. So I, I invite you to check that out. What emotion are you hanging on to? By not doing the thing that is this natural progression of life that ends up moving you towards excitement in life, to be excited, rich with this emotion and this energy, by not going, what are you holding on to? And listen, 
the longer you hold on to it, the worse you're going to feel. The worse you feel, the worse your body is going to be feeling physically as you hang on to this pressure. Remember, that's kinking the hose. You have that life force energy, which is the spigot, pouring through that hose, pouring through your body every day, telling you it's time to go. It's time to start walking. It's time to start driving. It's time to start looking for a job. It's time to start managing your money. It's time to get into a relationship. It's time to have babies. It's time to expand your learning. It's time to leave the relationship. It's time to quit the job. It's time to move on. But you're not going. You're kinking the hose. And behind that hose, what is building up? Pressure. Where are you feeling pressure in your life? Where in your body are you feeling pressure? Because it is in that pressure you are creating by not going naturally where your spirit is asking you to go. And it's amazing when you start raising your vibration, the things that start showing up. I have a friend who says, you know what? I want to help you in your business. And the part that I'm missing, the piece in my puzzle, in my business entrepreneurial journey puzzle, is the piece that she holds. But I would not have gotten there if I kept my vibration low. Because up here, the higher vibration is where my perspective shifts. And that's when shit starts happening. The good shit. That's where life gets tasty. That's where the experience in your life gets exciting and happiness is your everyday thread. That's what I want for you. And what I've been saying this whole time is I am linking arms with you to help you through that. Take the time. Take the time. Even if you're feeling negative 14, look around you and say, what is good in my life right now? Then when you're at that higher perspective, start shifting. Where do I need to go? What do I need to release in my life so I can start going? Think of yourself as a balloon with all the anchors. What anchor do I need to cut? And then start thinking and visualizing. If I cut that anchor, what's going to happen? What could I, what could I experience on the other side? If I leave this relationship, what am I letting go of? I'm letting go of anger. I'm letting go of, of that distrust. I'm letting go of betrayal. God. If I didn't have betrayal, what would I have? A beautiful, trusting, solid relationship. If I didn't have depression or anger, what would I have? I would have peace. I would have fun. I would have an amazing job. I would have abundance. I would have love. That's what I'm asking you to do. Journal it. Write it down. Think about where you're at only for the sake of getting you your, your baseline. What are my baseline? What's my baseline emotion? What's my baseline number? And then ask yourself, what would it take? If I let this go, what am I going to have? If I'm letting go of betrayal, what am I going to have on the other side of it? Now, I'm not advocating for everybody to leave their relationships, but if your relationship is shitty and you have done everything you could to get going and to get an agreement and to get the person and to help the person to see value and they're not seeing value, then I say, get the F out. Get out. Move on. There's people out there. Because I found it. I had crappy relationships and it took me some time and it took me some work, some inner work, and I shed some things and I dislodged some triggers and now I have an amazing, beautiful, trusting, harmonious, supportive, understanding, exciting relationship. And I want that same thing for you. The same job. I want that kind of excitement. So get out your journal, get going, get to work. And listen, excitement is only a couple of sentences away. If you liked this episode and you look forward to future episodes and are really looking for a community to help support you with implementing the tools that we're talking about in this podcast, please consider joining our online sister community called Lady Rising on Facebook, where we focus on that spiritual support and connection, just like in today's episode. I hope you'll join us. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, and tell me you came in through the podcast.